Dale Carnegie made a fortune by preaching that nice guys can finish first by following the golden rule, and his business is still going strong 75 years after he published his simple recipe for success. Just two steps, win friends and influence people. What was his philosophy in a nutshell? That you can change people's behavior by changing their, your attitude toward them. Peter Handel is the latest CEO of the Carnegie Empire that sells those books and teaches those courses, promising to bring you out of your shell, speak better, listen better, be a better person, and persuade other people to do what you want. I got to disagree. Do you know how many people have taken the course? We estimate eight million. I'm sorry, eight million. Eight million. That's the size of a country. Uh, some countries, that's right, exactly right. And there are some impressive alumni. Orville Redenbacher took the course, so did Warren Buffett and John Boehner. Students are attracted in large part by the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, published in 1936. It's a collection of parables and principles, simple business advice, more hallmark than Harvard, like smile. Be nice to people, mm -hmm. don't humiliate them, don't bully them. So with apologies, why do people need to pay good money to, to learn that? It's common sense. The difference is it's not common practice. We're going to start today with a representation of what may be going on every time you try to convey a message. At a Dale Carnegie class, everyone speaks, sometimes at the same time, learning to get their message across. This course, which costs close to $2,000 for eight sessions, is pretty much the same today as it was when Carnegie himself started teaching 99 years ago. When you can agreeably disagree on something, that future endeavors with each other, it usually comes back, you know? And you Bernie Dix was sent here by his boss at a New York City dry cleaners. Yeah, for tailoring, yeah, that came to me. I'm sorry. By his own admission, he had a few issues dealing with customers. Who do I have to call, Marlene and Lorraine? He's working on it, though. I've learned how to pause. You know, how to before, pause? before I react, you know, to uh, think about what I'm saying before it comes out of my mouth, which is something I never quite had a grasp on. You know? Did you used to tell off customers or? I had rough edges, <laughs> <laughs> okay? You, you get to approach it from a different angle at a, at a future date. You don't close the door. And He's a little smoother baby. now, he says, thanks in part to this somewhat chaotic exercise. Okay, 30 seconds, please begin. The Mets form PF. <laughs> as, as required by Dodd Frank. No other way to say it except that the Mets suck. You know, $160 million in payroll. What'd you learn from that? Two people talking at the same time doesn't work. But you didn't need a class Play. to know that, did you? Dealing with the public on a daily basis, you sometimes forget. So when you come back in, we'll straighten out a lot of all right? Take care. Dale Carnegie started teaching his classes in 1912. He was born dirt poor on a farm in Maryville, Missouri, but he went to college. The story is he turned to public speaking to win friends in college since he wasn't very athletic and felt inferior to the jocks. After college, he became a traveling salesman. He did well. He tried acting, he did not do well. May I give you one little bit of advice? Please. <laughs> Later in life, he tried acting again. When you're talking to somebody, why not let the other person finish what he's saying? That's Carnegie playing himself in the movie Jigs and Maggie in Society, starring nobody else most people have ever heard of. Mr. Carnegie, I didn't come here to be insulted. Temper, temper, temper. But by then, in real life, almost everyone had heard of him. Hundreds of thousands had signed up to hear him speak. The man who's enthusiastic will find the scales tipped in his favor. And a man of second-rate ability with enthusiasm will outstrip a man of first-rate ability without enthusiasm. He didn't knock people off their perches, you know. That was, a, I think that was a secret of his charm for audience, why people like to hear him speak was that you knew this is a real person talking to you. The late Dorothy Carnegie was Dale's wife. She spoke in this 1994 interview. He is not a stuffy man at all. 
And he was just so down to earth, you felt like you'd known him all your life. He'd been teaching for more than 20 years when an editor for Simon & Schuster took his class and convinced him to write a book, the book that launched the empire. It's estimated that it sold more than 30 million copies. This is the original manuscript of yes. How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is under glass preserved, much like the Declaration of Independence <laughs> and the Constitution. Are. Brenda Johnson is the keeper of the Carnegie flame and an indirect descendant of his. She's in charge of the Heritage Room at Dale Carnegie headquarters in Hopog, Long Island. It's important to our history. It's a part of who Dale Carnegie was and what this company was about. He wrote How to Win Friends as a textbook to go along with his classes. <laughs> And now the book has been updated for the digital age. Turns out you can win friends and influence people virtually anytime, even if you never actually see them. Dale Carnegie was very big on smiling. Mm -hmm. How do you smile in an email with, I guess there's an emoticon. You know, there is, and that I mean, that's What would nice, he have thought of emoticons? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that's a very good question. But you can choose words that will, will communicate that, if it takes longer. Okay, sir, tell me how you smile in an email. Just saying, I'm having a great day. Um, I hope you are too. I mean, that's kind of a pleasant way of saying something. But then you have to say, you know, where are the sales reports? Yeah, well, right. you get to that. Well, it just so happens that Dale And by all reports, sales at Dale Carnegie give the company every reason to smile. Today, the courses are offered in more than 80 countries, from China to Cameroon. It strikes me that a lot of the stories that he tells in his book are quintessentially American stories. Yeah. So how does that translate to somebody in Beijing? That's a fascinating question, Richard, because uh, that's something I've been really... Uh, Dale Carnegie enjoying. told you to say that, didn't No, he? that's not true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I pray he did, but I would have said it before. Right. Uh, the fact is, because human nature is the same all over the world, the principles that Dale Carnegie teaches really do work all over the world. What do we want people to do as a result of our experience? And as humans, it apparently feels natural to pay someone to tell us, be nice to others, follow the golden rule, even though parents and grandparents have been giving that advice for generations and for free.